guys, it's Austin here at Mutation Creation and in today's video we're going to be talking about another option to go and feed your ball python, specifically ASFs. But before we get into that, huge shout out to Herb Collectors, huge shout out to Mike, met him at Tinley, great guy, go and check him out. Even as a podcast he does, I believe it's weekly, so go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Is he slacking on the back? Yep. Yeah, Mike, stop slacking. So we're going to get straight into this video and... In this empty tub right here, I actually have an ASF. So this is a different prey item for your ball pythons. In the UK, I know they call them multis, but this is just something that I find ball pythons eat a little bit better. So if you have a ball python that's not eating every week or kind of a finicky eater, this could be the option for you because we believe here that it's very important to get your ball pythons to eat, especially if you want them to breed. Let me just put this one back in the tub here. So if you want them to breed, we want to get them to eat every week or every other week. Here we feed bi-weekly and if you look at our tubs over here, you can see that we have these red tags, some with no tags, some with yellow and whites. Whites like this mean that they're paired. Yellow means that they're ready to breed so we're pairing them. And the reds mean that they didn't eat and when you see multiple reds, that means they didn't eat multiple times. So like this one right here has two reds, that means it didn't eat for two weeks. We tried putting an ASF inside of there just to get them to eat. It looks like it hasn't eaten yet, not the best example for this video, but we're going to go through everything real quickly right now and show you about how many ball pythons we actually were able to get to eat that are not eating. You guys can see from that quick little time lapse of us going through the snakes that we just fed, we have 36 uh, reds that we were able to take off, so that's 36 feedings that were missed. Some of them were double feedings that were missed, some of them were single feedings, but we really like to get our ball pythons to eat almost every two weeks. It's very important for us, we believe, for follicle growth, and if they don't eat consistently, they're not going to have a big enough clutch or a good clutch, and sometimes they can even reabsorb. So we believe that feeding, once again, is really important for copulation and just getting our females to go and breed. And 36 is a really great number. We actually fed this week, so these females were all offered rats and did not take them. It's been three days and we offered them an ASF and they took even some in shed. The only thing we're gonna say about rats versus ASFs, ASFs tend to be a little bit more nippy, so we don't like to leave them overnight. Sometimes people like to leave rats overnight. I definitely wouldn't recommend that, but with the ASFs, I would recommend it even less because they do tend to bite and you don't want your ball pythons getting injured by the rats. It could discourage them to eat even more. So if you guys are having any issues with feeding with the rats or any other stuff, mice, I would try ASFs. I know in some states it's illegal. I believe Georgia is one of them. I heard rumors of California and other people saying it's not. So you're going to have to go and check your legislatives and your laws to make sure that they're not illegal. And if you contact a few rat breeders, I'm sure you'll be able to find one who has these Maltese or ASFs. They're a really good source for protein. They have less fat than rats do. So your ball python is going to grow a little bit better. It's what we've noticed. And I'm pretty sure that Gavin and some other breeders inside the UK have really good testimonials to go and back that up. A lot of them in the UK only feed ASFs. And even some people here in Kando only feed ASFs say their ball pythons grow a lot faster than the ones that are eating rats. So if that's an experiment you guys want to try, definitely go and try it. We're doing it here too. Even with some of my own babies, I've noticed the ones that are on ASFs grow a lot better and they tend to eat better and even give us bigger clutches. So a lot more stuff we're going to be doing with them in the future. Maybe we're going to go take some notes down, maybe do some studies. So that's pretty much going to be the end of the video about ASFs. I'm not the best expert on ASFs. I don't breed rats. I just feed them to my snakes. But if you guys are a keeper or a breeder who's having some picky eaters, ASF can definitely be an option to go and get your snakes eating again so you can have clutches and have your snakes thriving. Hit us down in the comment section below what you think about ASFs. There's a couple of rumors about them that if you do feed an ASF, they won't eat rats after. But if you guys notice, we have some green tags as well. And the green tags mean that they're ASF eaters. And when the green tag is in the middle, that means last time it actually ate a rat. So we're having snakes that are eating ASFs switch over to rats and vice versa. Snakes that are eating rats switch over to ASFs. And some weeks they're eating ASFs and then rats. So a lot of rumors, a lot of stuff. Every collection is different. We're not saying that this is what's going to work for us, it's going to work for you. But it's worth a try. So try ASFs if you're having any picky eaters. That's going to be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.